I've been using this M4 Pro Mac Mini every day now for well over six months at this point, and I still think it's one of, if not the best Mac I've ever owned. But you know what? Even with that said, I wouldn't buy it again. I've made some mistakes, and I want to make sure you don't make those same ones. So let's talk Mac Minis. I'm David, and this is D Talking Tech. When the M4 Mac Minis came out late last year, they were met with quite a fanfare, and I can understand why. At last, we had something new. A lot of the releases that Apple have been giving us recently aren't new at all. They're just a new chipset and a lick of paint. But the Mac Minis, well, they were brand new. From the ground up, they were smaller, more powerful, a brand new design, M4 Apple Silicon Thunderbolt 5. They almost sounded too good to be true. They almost sounded like something for nothing. So. I wanted to find out for myself what all the fuss was about. So like many creators late last year, I bought two. I bought the standard Mac Mini and also the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Now I only kept the standard Mac Mini for a couple of weeks and returned it. But in that time, I did some editing on it. I did some photo editing on it, some audio editing on it, all my daily work, and it was good. I even ran some benchmark tests on it as well. And it was incredibly close to the M4 Pro Mac Mini, but I've been caught out one too many times before, so I decided to return the standard Mac Mini and keep my well specced M4 Pro Mac Mini. I wanted a Mac that was going to last me for the test of time, and also the Mac Mini that I was buying was going to be replacing my go-to Mac for the previous three years. I was going to replace my M1 Max MacBook Pro with this new M4 Pro Mac Mini. I wanted to see how far Apple Silicon had come on in that time. Could a Pro chip out hit an older and earlier Max chip. That's what I wanted to put through the paces, and that was my reason for sending back the standard, the basic M4 Mac Mini, and keeping the M4 Pro Mac Mini. But with hindsight, I've made some mistakes. When I bought my M4 Pro Mac Mini, in my defense, the M4 Max Mac Studio wasn't available, and that changed everything overnight. But I overspect my M4 Pro Mac Mini. I went berserk with the options disk. Not only did I go for the M4 Pro, I upgraded the chip as well. So I ended up with a 14 core CPU and 20 core GPU chip. I went for 48 gigs of memory, one terabyte of SSD storage, and even the 10 gig ethernet port as well. Which means I spent 2,299 pounds. Now I could sit here and justify that to you by saying, it's what I do for a living and how hard I work on it. But the point is, if I was sitting down with you now in a coffee shop and you said to me, you were thinking of spending around about £2,000 on a desktop Mac, I wouldn't be suggesting that you buy an M4 Pro Mac Mini. There's other ways, other better ways that we could spend your money now. Now, with the Mac Mini, it is a great machine. But what you need to do is realize what it is and lean into its strengths, lean into what Apple is offering us. You can get an awful lot done without having to spend too much, and that is its strength. That £599 entry model, and I think you can get it for just a little bit less than that now on Amazon, is a Mac that would suit most people most of the time. But equally, if you spend just a little bit more money, you're gonna have a Mac that's gonna see you through years and years of service. It's gonna be good enough to go with whatever increased workflows you have and whatever direction your workflow takes you. Spending that little bit more money early on is going to pay you back tenfold down the line. Now, do you remember I made a video about the iPad mini last week? And in it, I said that one of its strengths, or its biggest strength, was that it was not trying to be something it wasn't. I think we need to carry that same line of thought through to the Mac mini. Don't try and make the Mac mini into something it isn't. And with the M4 Max Mac Studio around now, Honestly, we don't need to go chasing the options. Spending your money wisely on the Mac Mini means prioritizing the memory over the storage. Storage is ridiculously expensive with Apple. It always has been and it still is. And assume you've got an iCloud account with a reasonable amount of storage on for photos and the like. Honestly, you don't need to go one, two terabytes. You don't need to go mad on internal Apple storage with your Mac Mini. You really don't. When I bought my Mac Mini, I hadn't used external SSDs. And honestly, if you haven't tried them for yourselves yet, they are the way to go. They just have opened up so many different ways of working. They're ex obviously, they're expandable. And also, it means I can work pretty much from anywhere on any project. These SSDs come with me absolutely everywhere. I've got one permanently attached to my M4 Pro Mac Mini. I've got four terabytes of SSD attached to it all of the time. And on there, I put all of the archives for this year's videos. I now also put those on my NAS as well, not only for redundancy, but that also means that I can access those files remotely as well. But when it comes to memory, well, that's a different thing. That's where any extra cache you've got should go. Now, all Macs come with 16 gigs of memory now. That was something Apple ordered last year, and that's great for us. But equally, I'd say just top that up a little bit. Allow for the fact that your workflow could increase over the years that you own this Mac Mini. 
So go for 24 gigs if possible. The 10 gig ethernet port, I went for it because I knew that I was going to be getting a NAS. Equally, you might have fiber to the door. If you've got a real need for that 10 gig ethernet port, fine, but it's quite a niche option. So again, that's probably money that you can save. Now, I would say that the sweet spot for a Mac Mini, the choices I would go for now would be the M4 chip, the standard M4 chip, 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 24 gigs of memory, and 512 gigs of SSD storage. And that's going to cost you a thousand pounds. And that, that is a bargain. That is where the Mac Mini should sit. And you'll notice at the start of my videos, I say talking Apple intelligently. And that is exactly what we do every week, week in, week out. We talk Apple, everything Apple, anything Apple. And if you're enjoying the way we do that, I'd really love to have you on the journey as this channel grows. And to help me grow, if you just sub, turn on notifications, that's all I ask you. It honestly really does help. And if you enjoy being part of this community, there's a couple other things you might be interested in as well. We've got our own Discord server now as well. There's details of that in the description. So if you want to carry on the chat during a week with like-minded Apple friends, that's the place to be. And also every single weekend, every Sunday, I send out a totally free video newsletter about 10 minutes long, talking about what sponsors I'm going to be working with, talking about gossip behind the scenes, talking about things that go on here that I can't talk about on the main videos. If that sounds like it could be of interest to you, again, there's details in the description. Just leave me your email address and you'll receive that free newsletter every weekend. I now know that I spent way too much money on the options on my M4 Pro Mac Mini but that is with the benefit of hindsight. I spent 200 pounds on upgrading the chip to that 14 core CPU and 20 core GPU chip. I spent another 400 pounds on 48 gigs of memory. And those two upgrades alone means that that M4 Pro Mac Mini would cost 2000 pounds. And here's where everything changes. Now that we've got the M4 Max Mac Studio, the base M4 Max Mac Studio only costs 100 pounds more. And for that 100 pounds, you get 36 gigs of memory. You get 512 gigs of storage, but you get way more besides. The memory bandwidth is much quicker on the Mac Studio, 410 gigs per second, as opposed to 273 gigs per second on my M4 Pro Mac Mini. You get two video encode and decode engines. You get an extra Thunderbolt 5 port. You get an SD card slot. You get USB-A ports. You get more support for external displays. And that 10 gig ethernet port I spent 100 pounds on that standard as well, the more I look at this M4 Max Mac Studio, the base M4 Max Mac Studio, the more sense it makes to me. Of course, with Apple, there's always a but. And the but with the Mac Studio comes with upgrading the memory. It's not a simple checkbox. If you want to go from 36 to 48 gigs of memory, you can't just simply choose 48 gigs of memory. No, Apple makes you spend another 300 pounds to upgrade the chip, first of all, to the 16 core CPU and 40 core GPU chip. Then they automatically upgrade you to 48 gigs of memory. You can equally then choose 64 gigs of memory. But don't forget, this is costing you all the time. And what you can't do is go backwards. You can't upgrade the chip and only have 36 gigs of memory. No, Apple have got you caught here. And by making those choices and simply upgrading that chip to the 16 core CPU and 40 core GPU chip, you've suddenly spent 2,600 pounds. Do you need those extra cores? I wouldn't say so. I've been using this M4 Pro Mac Mini, as I said, for about seven months now. And it's only got 14 cores of CPU and 20 cores of GPU. And I've edited all of these videos, which include a lot of ProRes footage off the iPhone Pro Max and off my Canon here as well, raw audio. It handles a lot, transitions, all sorts of effects, and it's rarely, rarely struggled. So honestly, I would say that that base level off the shelf M4 Max, Mac Studio would be good enough for most people. Sure, I've got 48 gigs of memory. Do I need it? No, I'm thinking 36 gigs probably would be more than enough for the kind of work I do. I've got one terabyte of SSD inside my M4 Pro Mac Mini. Do I need it? No, I don't. Don't forget when I bought this, I hadn't entered the world of external SSDs and I swear by them now. I honestly swear by them. I would, If I was buying this M4 Pro Mac Mini again, 100%, I'd go with 512 gigs of SSD storage on it. The thing is, we live and we learn. I don't regret this M4 Pro Mac Mini at all. It is a fantastic Mac. It's quiet, it's small, and it does everything I ask of it. It never leaves the studio, and I'm really happy with the configs that I've got. But of course, now with the M4 Max Mac Studio, there are other options that you can make. And if you do any kind of creative work, honestly, look at that base M4 Max Mac Studio. It is a bargain. And we need to all learn and get into the habit of not trying to spend more money with Apple than we need. We are living through a time of some of the best hardware that Apple has ever made. There's a Mac out there for all of us, for all of our needs, for all of our requirements, no matter how we work, there's a Mac out there and we don't need to dress it up an awful lot. Don't try to make these devices into something they're not. Be smart, use your money wisely and take what Apple's got on offer. Honestly, 
it is a brilliant time to buy on a Mac right now, but just don't make the mistakes I did and don't go mad on the options. Now, if you've enjoyed me talking about the M4 Pro Mac Mini, there's a video on screen now that I think you'll really enjoy telling you how it changed my setup pretty much forever.